Hi everybody, Tom Chapman here, and welcome back to my Map Tool Tutorial Series. We're going to continue talking about campaign properties, and today discuss light sources and how to set them up. So to do this, we're just going to dive right into Map Tool. So what we can see when we open campaign properties and go to the light menu, as you can see now, are D20 and generic options. The basic distances, or the generic distances, just give a light source out to a circle of the distance given. The D20 sources are a bit more customized. Now here's how they're broken down. First, we have a group of light sources. So everything under this is considered part of the D20 group. So we give it a name, so in this case we have D20, and then we separate it by a line of hyphens. Then the next line is where our first light source actually begins. What this does is when we go to a token, let me grab one here, put it on the table, when we right click on it and go down to light source, it takes the big name and turns it into categories, and then it takes all the individual light sources and turns them in to something you can select and apply to this token. Let me get back up here to my campaign properties. Now what will happen is both of these groups will automatically be sorted. So no matter what order you put in new light sources, it will sort first by the category alphabetically, and then even though you have different things typed in here, like if you put them by distance as this individual did when they first put together Map Tool, when you right click on it, it will actually go alphabetically. So this lantern would move further up this chart and Sunrod would become, come before Torch. So under this heading, this D20 heading, we're going to add a new source and I'm going to make another hooded lantern. Now, if we look, there's already a hooded lantern in here, but I'm going to put it in again and we're going to change some aspects of it. So I'm going to start with my name, lantern hooded dash 30. Now that is the name of my new light source. In order to start creating the light source beyond its name, I have to add a colon. Now just like the last video, the next thing that we can add are, are the shapes of our light sources. And we can have circle, square, and cone. And then cone can also be used with the arc equals number, like when we set up our vision. So if I said cone arc equals 90, that gives us a vision source or a light source that shoots straight out and it covers a 90 degree swath. Now this is actually a little larger than I want it to be, so I'm going to cut that down to 30. And then we're going to give a distance for how far our, our light source goes out. And I'm going to type in 30. So now we have a cone with an arc of 30 that goes out 30 feet. The next number I can add, and I'm going to come up here and snag this, is a much longer number. And so there's two parts to this actually. The first is what comes before the pound sign or the number sign, the number 60. So even though the light goes out to 30, what this is saying is the light actually goes out to 60, but between 30 and 60, we're going to have a different color because what these numbers represent are colors. And we can actually use these numbers to change the color of this band using RGB valuing. If we removed this, everything that comes after the number sign to the end of these zeros, the light source would read the number that comes second and so what it would do is it'd say, all right, cone with an arc of 30, a distance of 30, a distance of 60. And so then that 30 wouldn't even matter there. So I'm going to come up here, copy this back down, and add it back in. And with that, I've added a new D20 form for a, lantern, a hooded lantern. So I'll click OK, come down here to my Elf Scout, and I'm going to give it a light source, D20 lantern hooded. And when I come up here to my map, and give it vision night and turn on fog of war when I hover over it after I give it some vision I can now see that it's got a cone coming out to the right and it shifts depending on where my facing is now I'm gonna come back up here to my campaign properties and go to light map tool includes an example of how to make this more involved so I will copy it up from below and add it to my set and so I come down here, sample lights, five foot square grid. So I'm going to grab this and copy all of this, control C. I'm going to add this to the bottom. You'll notice that between each of these, between D20, generic, and sample lights, there's a blank line. You need that blank line in there in order to say, all right, here's one group, 
blank line, here's the generic group, blank line, here's the sample lights, five foot grid. Let's go over this set here. Now this set uses half numbers to make neat squares that don't go out halfway like this last one did. So if I look at this, uh, let's say torch. The torch goes out 22.5 feet. So I'll click OK. Let me show up the grid. And if you look right here, our current light source goes halfway out. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say light source clear all. Come back down, sample lights. And I'm going to say just a torch. So now our torch comes out 20 feet and then it goes out another 20 feet and it starts from the middle of this grid. Come back up and scroll down. Now let's look at something else, the bullseye lantern, which is kind of what I just tried to show you above. What this is showing us is it's a cone with an arc of 60 degrees that goes out 62.5 feet in dim light out to 122.5 feet with a normal, nothing special RGB value. Click OK and I'll show you what that looks like. Light source, clear lights, and lantern with a bullseye. So now we see how far out this goes. What we should notice is that this actually produces more light than the vision has set up. So even though the light goes all the way out here, if I were to reveal this right now, it wouldn't fill up all the light produced because currently the Elf Scout doesn't have a far enough vision. Another cool one, coming back up here to properties, is the Bullseye Lantern. And then we're going to look at this one that says Leaks Light. And this is really cool. Now, what this is showing us is, again, a cone with an arc of 60 that goes out to 62.5 feet, and beyond that goes out dimly lighting another 122.5 feet. Then we have another thing here. We have a circle with 2.5. Now, I'm actually going to change this to, uh, I'll just say 10. So what this does is when I click OK and I come down here, it's the exact same thing, clear lights, as my first bullseye lantern, only this time, we see a little more around the token. And so that's a cool little option we have where if I reveal, I have a stream of light that goes straight out in this arc like a normal bullseye lantern, but because it's not as good, it leaks light around the user, revealing up to 10 feet away. Now the last option that's really cool, and I just discovered this while I was working on this video, is the night vision goggles. Now here's what the night vision goggles tell us. We have a cone with an arc of 30, so it's a much smaller arc than we're used to, that goes out to 42.5 feet, and then they've changed this one character in the RGB value from zero to E. So I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna move this guy so we can kind of see what this does. And I'm gonna right click him, get rid of his lights, and I'm gonna give him the night vision goggles. And so what this does is now this thing has a vision out to this line right here, but because of that one letter or character that we changed, it's now green. So that's just kind of a cool little addition. You know, if you're playing a D20 modern or any sort of modern game and you want to be have a little flavor, it doesn't affect how it reveals vision or anything. It's still going to reveal normally, but now it's going to tint it green, which is just kind of a little cool addition. So in the link below, I'll show you what I use to grab colors and their, uh, their codes and everything. But for right now, let me open this up and I'll show you what, I've, what I use to get all this stuff. So I go to a website called palatin.com and I'm going to drag it over here so you can see it. What this is, is I can kind of go anywhere on this and pick a color that I like and it will give me the RGB value in the lower left hand corner. So let's say I want night vision and I want it to be purple. So here it has this RGB value down here, but I want it to be a really deep purple. So I'm gonna come over here and that changes the RGB value a little more. Click on this, I'm gonna hit Control C. I'm gonna come back over here to Map Tool, come back up to my Campaign Properties, and I'm gonna go down to my night vision goggles and I'm gonna change these six characters, Control V, and click OK. So now, when I have this guy, 
you can kind of see that it's purple instead. Control I, everything's tinted a little purple this time. Now the last option we have are things called auras. So I'm gonna come up here to campaign properties and go back to light. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and there's actually already some auras that they have given to us down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy all of these and then hit control C and come up here and paste these auras. Now what auras do is they create a light-like color around a token but do not reveal fog of war and is blocked by vision blocking. So this is not a source of light. This is more of a, hey, something's happening out to this distance around this token. So let's say, for example, now that I have these, I'm going to click OK and I'm going to change my map back to daylight so this is a little easier to see. Turn off some fog of war. I'm going to drag this guy right here to the middle of the screen. So I've installed these auras, and let's say it's like a paladin in Pathfinder. Paladins in Pathfinder have an ability, depending on their aura, that goes out a certain distance, and it may cause undead to not want to be near them, or it may make their compatriots fight better. So what will happen is when I right-click on it and go to Light Source and go to Sample Auras, let's say I want an aura of red out to 10 feet. And so now it creates this lightly shaded 10-foot aura, and you can tell, like, maybe it's Fire Shield, and anybody that gets that close starts to take damage. Or if it's the Paladin's aura, anybody that gets within this distance either has a penalty or bonus to how they're fighting. By applying an aura, you can see where that ability would end and who is affected. Coming back up here, I want to show you this because there's three options that we have for auras. Blank, for example, if we look up here, not putting anything in here, aura with nothing between it and square, means that anybody can see it. If I come up here to this aura, aura GM circle, that means only I can see that aura, no one else can, or someone logged in as a GM. And then if I come down to here, the aura owner, aura owner square, means that only those selected as an owner of a token can see it when it shows up, and the GM. In all of these cases, though, the GM will see it on their screen. As far as distinguishing between when it's an aura and when it's a light source, all we have to do, and it's kind of hard to see, but after the name and the colon, the very first thing you should put in is aura. If you don't put in aura, it's going to become a light source. With aura, it becomes an aura. Now that's it for right now, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, uh, and I hope you got something out of it, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.